وكذلك أوحينا إليك روحا من أمرنا ما كنت تدري ما الكتاب ولا الإيمان ولكن جعلناه نورا ولكن جعلناه نورا نهدي به من نشاء من عبادنا وإنك لتهدي إلى صراط مستقيم صراط الله الذي له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض ألا إلى الله تصير الأمور بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته we should know about the traps of shaitan because we need to avoid them. We need to be, we need to keep away from them. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created shaitan and shaitan he, he, he was uh, angry with Allah because Allah created Adam alayhi salatu wasalam and made Adam the uh, successor on the earth. Now a question that I have for the audience here is who was the first one uh, brother Lutfi who is the first human being who was trapped by Iblis by Shaitan the first one uh, was uh, Adam exactly exactly absolutely and the reason now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam and as his soul was being put into him when the soul reached the head as the soul was going slowly down when the soul reached the head Adam alayhi salatu was salam, he sneezed. And he said, and he looked around and the angels who were watching him, uh, they said, say alhamdulillah. So he said, alhamdulillah. And then in return, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, ya Allah. May Allah have mercy upon you. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the angels to prostrate to Adam. Now Iblis, may Allah's curse be upon him, was with them, with, with, was with the angels. Now he was actually a jinn. He wasn't from the angels, but he was, Allah says, وَكَانَ مِنَ الْجِنْ He was of the jinn. But he was also ordered to prostrate to Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. Now he refused. And because of that, he was told that he'll be, he will remain in the hellfire forever. May Allah's curse be upon him. Now he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be given respite until yawm al qiyamah. So he can mislead as many people as he possibly can. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him this opportunity and that is when the struggle began that's when the fight between good and evil began uh, and the fight between adam alayhi salatu wasalam and his progeny against shaitan this is when it began and this battle is a long one and it started then and it is continuing now to this day we are fighting the same battle that iblis began with our father adam alayhi salatu wasalam Anyway, and this, but this, this will continue until Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Anyway, uh, after created, creating Adam, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put him in paradise. And then he created him a partner, Hawa, uh, for him. And Shaitan, he wanted to mislead Adam, alayhi salatu wasalam. He was jealous, he was envious, and he was uh, angry, he was proud, he was haughty, he was arrogant. So all of these evil qualities came together inside Shaitan. He was burning with anger. So what does he want to do now? He wants to take revenge. He wants to take revenge. How does he take revenge? He misleads the children of Adam. And he starts with Adam alayhi salatu wasalam himself. Now we all know the story. So he kept on insisting and telling them, Adam and Hawa alayhi salatu wasalam, to eat from this tree in paradise. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had forbidden them from eating from this tree. Do what you want, eat from wherever you want, but keep away from this tree. There's one tree. Um, and at first they remembered this and they refused to obey shaitan. But shaitan, Iblis, he persisted. And eventually he told them that if they eat from this tree, they will become immortal like the angels and they'll live forever. And this is, uh, we can see even now, they have this, this cream and that cream to make a person's skin look young. And yeah, yeah. To make a person look, you know, uh, as if youth will remain forever. So they want to become immortal. And this was 
the way shaitan came and he trapped Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. So Allah says in the Quran, وَقَاسَمَهُمَا إِنِّي لَكُمَا لَمِنَ النَّاصِحِينَ Look how shaitan came. He didn't come and say, hey, disobey Allah. He came and he said, Allah says, and he took an oath to them. He took an oath. قَاسَمَهُمَا He took an oath to them both. And he said that I am definitely from among the sincere advisors. I'm definitely from among the sincere advisors. And this is exactly what he comes to us today. You wake up in the morning, the alarm goes, say, hey, shaitan whispers into your ear, ah, oh, press the snooze button, you've got five more minutes. And the snooze button goes on maybe 20, 30 times. Okay, and the person misses Salat al-Fajr. He comes from another angle to another person, he says, hey, the boiler isn't working, the water is too cold to make wudu. So, yeah, you just, you need, you're tired, you need to go to work in the morning. You don't need to pray yet. Pray when you get up. Allah is forgiving. He's merciful. So how does he come? As a, as an advisor. This is shaitan. He comes as an advisor. And this is exactly what tipped the balance for Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. Adam could not fathom. He could not imagine that somebody would take an oath by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then lie upon that oath. So Adam ate from the tree. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reprimanded Adam and Hawa alayhi salatu wasalam and sent them down from the paradise to the earth. And Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, he begged Allah's forgiveness. And this is the crux. This is the difference between Iblis and Adam. Iblis, when Allah ordered him to prostrate to Adam, he refused. He sinned. But when he was, when Allah took him up on this, what happened? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him to repent, he refused to repent. As for Adam, alayhi salatu as soon as soon as he, as soon as he, uh, as soon as he uh, sinned, what did he do? What did he do, brother? He repented. Uh, huh? he repented. He did, he repented. He turned back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance. And what did he say? He said some beautiful words. He asked Allah for mercy. Okay? He asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for mercy. And he said, رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا well, They said, Oh our Lord, we have transgressed against our own selves. And if you do not forgive us, we'll be of the khasirin, of the losers. Because he realized. But he also said another thing, according to some narrations. He said, Oh Allah, when you created me, did you not say that your mercy overcomes your anger? And when I sneezed, did you not say, يَرْحَمُكَ Allah? May Allah have mercy upon you. You remember at the beginning when Allah yeah. created yeah. him? And he sneezed, he said, Alhamdulillah. Allah said, Ya Allah. So he said, your, your Lord, you said, May Allah have mercy upon you. He's making, uh, he's speaking directly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave him. Now, there are many benefits of this story. So, from this story, we can see clearly how important it is for us to learn about the traps of Iblis. So we don't actually fall into them ourselves. And this is very integral to this a series of purifying our soul. Because we need to purify our souls from sin and transgression. And Iblis, he comes with this evil, and he comes with different traps, in order to get a person to fall into these traps. And he perseveres with the human being until he gets them to do one or more of these six evils. And inshaAllah, after the break, we'll have a look at some of these uh, evils. وَصَلَّى اللَّهُ وَبَارَكَ عَلَى نَبِيْنَا مُحَمَّدٍ وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين And people need each others need scholars more than they need to drink and eat because even regarding what we drink and eat. We may not be able to figure out which is permissible and which is not. Quran is not preserved in the books only. The seerah of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is not preserved in the books only, but on the heart, in the hearts of men, in the hearts of people who have devoted their time to seeking knowledge. Believe and trust tawakkul that none could take place without the knowledge of Allah.
Alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, and welcome back. Before the break, we were talking about some of the, uh, or the importance of knowing the traps of Iblis, uh, may Allah's curse be upon him, or Shaitan. Now, let us go on to the first trap that Iblis tries to entice the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to fall into. And this is called kufr or shirk, uh, polytheism and disbelief. Disbelief and polytheism. And if he gains this from the person, then he has achieved the main goal with this individual. This is the first thing that Iblis wants from a person. So he tries his hardest to convince the person to associate partners with Allah. And this is shirk and kufr, to associate partners with Allah. And kufr is to disbelieve, to disbelieve. And this could be by them actually negating the very existence of Allah, or by performing acts of worship to other than Allah. So the Christians, for example, they worship Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. And so they have fallen into this trap of kufr uh, and shirk. And the Hindus, they worship many idols, and thus they too have fallen into this trap. In the same way, the atheists, they say that there is no God, and thus have also fallen into uh, this trap. Unfortunately, even some Muslims have fallen into this trap. They criticize, we criticize the Christians for worshipping Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. But at the same time, you find some Muslims, they make dua to uh, the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. Isn't this double standards? These are double standards. So on the one hand, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ فَلَا تَدْعُوا مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا That the mosques, they belong to Allah. So do not uh, make dua, don't invoke, don't supplicate to anyone alongside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's actually another ayah of the Quran. That we recite 17 times a day in every single rakah of every single prayer, which has a similar meaning. What is that, uh, brother? In Surah Fatiha. In Surah Fatiha, exactly. Pardon? Exactly. Exactly. Which means, brother Gulraz? Means uh, you alone we worship mm -hmm. and you alone we ask for help. Exactly. Exactly. You alone we worship and you alone we ask for help. We seek aid from you. And in spite of this verse, in spite of saying, and there's a reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to mention the, these verses in every rakah of every prayer, 17 times a day at least. How do we get 17 by the way, Brother uh, Lutfi? During the prayers. Yes. In Fajr we have how many rakahs? Uh, two. Two. Okay. And then uh, four. Four in? Four. In Dhuhr? Yeah. And that comes to how many? Six. Uh, six. Yes. And then, and then uh, four. Ten. And then three. Uh, three. Yes, thirteen. Then four. Then four. Which is? Seventeen. Seventeen, <laughs> exactly. So seventeen times a day, we say, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ You alone we worship, O Allah, and you alone we ask for help. Now, in spite of this verse, and in spite of the numerous verses from in the Qur'an, which explicitly order us to direct all of our worship, and all of our du'as are supplications to Allah, there are still some Muslims who still make du'a to the Prophet ﷺ, or to some righteous servants of Allah. So the Prophet ﷺ said, الدُّعَاءُ هُوَ ibada. Du'a is worship. Yet, some people claim that they are not worshipping the Prophet ﷺ when they make du'a to him. Isn't this a contradiction? Yeah. Allah's Messenger ﷺ said, du'a is worship. And they say, when I'm making du'a to the Prophet ﷺ, this is not du'a, this is a contradiction. And it is also a show of double standards. That we criticize the Christians for doing this, but yet some of the Muslims do exactly that. In the same way, some people slaughter animals, sacrificing them for other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is also shirk, and this is the first trap of shaitan. Okay, the first trap. In the same way, some people take oaths by other than Allah. Even though the Prophet ﷺ said, مَنْ حَلَفَ بِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ فَقَدْ كَفَرَ أَوْ أَشْرَكَ that whoever has taken an oath by other than Allah has certainly committed kufr or shirk. He's disbelieved or he has associated partners with Allah. So he believes, and, and we see this all the time, people taking oaths by other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can think of some funny ones. I mean, uh, I heard one person, he said, uh, I swear by my mother's grave and all these things. But the worst one I heard was meri kuri dikasam, which basically means... My, my girlfriend's, uh, upon, I take an oath by my girlfriend. And this is, you know, uh, this is a clear example of shirk. I mean, the person might have been joking, but he's fallen into shirk. And this is exactly what uh, Iblis wants. 
So Iblis tries his best to get the slave of Allah, the worshipper of Allah, to fall into this first trap, which is shirk and kufr. And if he gives up hope of tempting him with the first trap, and if this person is one of those for whom it is written that he will be a Muslim, then Iblis tries the second class of evil, the second trap. And that is innovation, bid'ah. Now, the Prophet ﷺ said, وَشَرُّ الْأُمُورِ مُحْتَثَاتُهَا The worst of affairs are the newly invented matters in the religion. وَكُلُّ مُحْتَثَةٍ bid'ah. And every uh, newly invented matter in the religion is an innovation. وَكُلُّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ And every uh, innovation is a misguidance. وَكُلُّ ضَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ And every misguidance is in the hellfire. So we can see how evil the sin of bid'ah is. The Prophet ﷺ also said, مَنْ أَحْدَثَ فِي أَمْرِنَا مَا لَيْسَ مِنْهُ فَهُوَ رَدْ Whoever introduces in this affair of ours that which is not from it, it will be rejected. It will be rejected. Now let's have a look at some examples of uh, innovation. If somebody comes and he says, today I'm going to pray Salatul Fajr four rakahs. Not two, four rakahs. Is this a good thing or a bad thing, Lutfi? It's a bad thing. Why is it a bad thing? In his opinion, uh, think, he thinks that he's doing something good. Yeah. But it uh, came from uh, the evil who is uh, trying to convince him so about doing Yes, it. but he may argue, he might argue, Brother Muhammad, he might say that I'm only making Fajr four rakahs because there's more Quran, I'm going to recite Fatiha more often, I'm going to do more sujood, I'm going to do more ruku. So he says, in this person's mind, he thinks this innovation is a good thing. He, th- he thinks to himself that actually I'm doing more good deed. I'm prostrating more. I'm making more ruku. How would you answer that question? And, I mean, that's, that's, that, that's the reason why uh, shaitan loves innovation after kufr. Because mm-hmm. that person believes he's doing good. Then mm-hmm. he will not repent on that. Uh-huh. And he's doing something that is not from the sunnah and it is exactly. an innovation. Yeah. Exactly. But why is it? What, how would you answer this doubt, this question that he has? He thinks that by doing more, he's actually going to, uh, he's getting closer to Allah. That's wrong because if it was, if it was something that was better, then the Prophet would have ordered this to do it. Exactly the point, because <coughs> it, when a person he says, "I'm going to make fajr four rakahs, not two, four rakahs, the fard, I'm going to make it four rakahs," then in actuality he's doing one of two things. He's either saying, "I know something that makes me get closer to Allah," something that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not know. And Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in. None of them knew this. Mm-hmm. Is this conceivable? It's not conceivable. The other option is that he's saying, indirectly of course, he's saying that if I'm going to do something that the Prophet ﷺ knew, but he did not teach the ummah about. He hid it from the ummah. Is this conceivable? It's not conceivable. So we say to this person that yes, you may be doing more rakahs, more ruku. But more is not always better. If it was better, the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ did it. I want to touch on a point that you mentioned earlier on actually. You said that Iblis loves bid'ah uh, more than like major sins or minor sins. Now why is that? Do you want to, I just want you to uh, expound because, on that. Because the person who actually does the innovation believes mm-hmm. he is doing good. Therefore he will not turn back in repentance to Why Allah. does he believe he's, good, he's doing good? Because that, that's something from his intelligence that he, he, he begins to think that that is good, even though it's not established in the sunnah. Mm-hmm. Because why he thinks that this is something, uh, he thinks that this is something part of the religion. He thinks that bid'ah, when someone prays four rakahs for fajr instead of two, then he's actually trying to worship Allah. He thinks that he's actually doing something good. And this is one of the reasons why Iblis likes bid'ah more. And also bid'ah actually harms the religion. Innovation harms the religion, as well as the person who does it. How? Because people begin to think that this is part of Islam. And if they think this is part of Islam, when a person does a bid'ah, like he does four rakahs for fajr instead of two, then you've added an innovation, but you've also taken away the correct Islam, which is the two rakahs of Salat al-Fajr. And this goes with actually with all types of bid'ah. Furthermore, bid'ah is actually a call, is against the call uh, of the messengers, and it is actually a call to a message different from the one conveyed the Prophet ﷺ. And likewise, bid'ah is a gate to disbelief, to polytheism, kufr, and shirk. 
And let's take an example. Now we know that Adam والسلام, was upon Tawheed and, or, or the oneness of Allah. And yet at Nuh والسلام, we also know that he was giving da'wah to people who would worship idols. What are these idols called? Wad, Suwa, Yahuf, Ya'uq and Nasr. These five idols. Now how did this happen? How is it that between the time of Adam والسلام, until Nuh والسلام, Gulraz, how? Is it that people who are upon Tawheed, with these generations, how, within this uh, period of time, how did they come to start worshipping idols? Well, I guess um, shaitan came, uh, came to them at stages. Mm-hmm. So, first he would say, you know, to just In to the remember the, the righteous people. Exactly. It is something similar to that. Actually, what actually happened is that uh, the people, uh, though Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu mentions this very clearly, he explained this in, in one narration. He said that for 10 generations, people were upon Tawheed. And then after that, Shaitan came to the people and told them to make pictures and statues of these pious, of the pious people before them. Wad, Su'a, Yahuth, Ya'uq, and Nasr. So these five idols actually were names of pious people. So Shaitan came, when these people died, Shaitan came to their people. And he said, when these pious people died, Shaitan came to the people who were left after them. And he said, make pictures of these, make statues of these people. When they see these statues and pictures, they would be reminded of their piety. And hence, they would become more pious. Now notice, again, Shaitan has come in the form of an advisor, a sincere advisor. So when this generation had passed away, Shaitan went to the next generation. generation, And he told them that their forefathers did not actually create these statues except to worship them and to call upon them. So this we can see the evils of bid'ah. First, the first thing the person did, he took pictures, he took, uh, stat- he made statues of these uh, pious people. I mean, these were pious people. And this is how shaitan, uh, shaitan convinced them to fall into shirk and kufr, uh, simply by way of innovation. And inshallah, in the next episode, we'll continue with this, uh, topic of the traps of shaitan wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh